Hello, everyone. Hello. We're just going to wait just for about a minute before we start. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fundraising that we've been doing, and that's been the Blankets for Babes. And we have been overly amazed with just the participation that people have come and just how people have come out of the wordworks. After at the end, I'm actually going to show a bunch of things that have happened and kind of like how blessed we've been to receive so many blankets and clothes. And I want you to know that each of you that have been part of the service, it is definitely healing for you that have done it, but also for me um, as each blanket and each clothing that I receive, I almost shed a tear just holding it, knowing that there will be another family who will receive it during the hardest part of their life. And hasn't it been amazing just to see how many people have like, just today, even after we thought that it was over on the 31st, we have had an outpour of people just stopping by and giving us stuff. We've had people send us stuff through Amazon. Um, we've had uh, friends and neighbors. We've had uh, tons of influence of, of people reach out to us. So yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been involved in this as we definitely believe that to survive, we are gonna have to serve and we serve for our little ones. There's little Layla in the back. As you know, we lost Layla to a drowning accident about almost four months ago. And so when you think four months, that's a long time, isn't it? Like I almost feel like, I feel like it's been forever, but it's also been very short, like it happened almost, yesterday. Almost, yeah, 120 days. Yeah, even more than, yeah. So we just wanted to thank everybody that's on this journey. We couldn't do this without you. And we just feel like so pushed to share things on our mind and hopefully to connect with some of you that need someone to talk to or to know that you are feeling norm normal and it's okay to grieve the way you grieve because none of us grieve the same. Yeah. So tonight we're going to kind of focus on something totally different. Um, obviously, uh, we're going to talk about is how we all grieve differently and particularly our children. Um, this has been a real hard thing for us because obviously there is no roadmap or uh, plan book <laughs> about what to do. But the one thing we do know, just like anything, is we know that is if you push something down long enough or far enough, it never ever is healthy. So we've been really open about with our children about talking about uh, the death of our daughter, but more importantly about you know how how they're dealing. Um, they have seen us cry many times, and that's okay. Uh, we've seen them, and uh, we're just going to have them give their opportunity to kind of talk a little bit because they said they would like to help other people too. And So if our children feel like they need to help to share their story, we're going to let them do that if that's what they want. So this isn't um, planned. So some of our little ones, they said they want to. If they get on here and they don't say anything, that's all right. Okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll just see. We're just going to be real. We have no rewards yeah. if they do a good job or not. Yeah, so. yeah there's no brownies in the background if they yeah. do a, a good maybe job. I maybe I should have done that. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, you should make one for me. All right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, yeah. So we're going to So one thing with tonight. grieving, though, I do want you to know this. I feel like this week has been very highly about sex trafficking with children. And it has pulled at my heart to a point that makes me disgusted of what is going out there in the world and that there's options to even allow it to become normal. And this is where we have to voice. You guys, the only way that this will ever stop or that it will lower the numbers and stuff is, is if we have a voice. We allow the kids to have a voice because they really don't, we need to be their voice. And so I felt like this goes really well with our children having a voice on how they mourn because there's other children out there who are mourning, who don't know how to mourn, and we don't know how to mourn either. We're just going through it, and maybe, just maybe, something that my children say may connect with another child that is going through the same thing of losing their brother or sister or their mom or dad or their grandparents or someone close to them or even their pet. I mean, a loss is a loss and it hurts. And with kids, sometimes we are so focused on ourselves that we miss out on our most prized possessions, that's our children. So we're gonna have... We're gonna have our oldest daughter, and um, she's gonna go first, and uh, so, we yeah, love her so love much. Her and so much. she is just, she's just a joy in our home. We love this little girl. Come here, Rach. All right, you ready, Rach? Yeah. Nice and tall, so we can see ya. Awesome. So, Rachel, how old are you? I'm nine, turning ten. She's nine, turning ten. She's so excited because her birthday's in two days. Woo! And she gets her ears pierced, don't ya? Are you excited about that? Just kind of, just a little bit. No, a lot. She's super excited. Do you just want me to ask you questions, or do you just want to start talking about Layla? No, you ask me questions. Okay. So I guess I, my main question is: Was it hard when Layla passed away? Yeah. I, I, yeah, it was. Yeah. What was hard about it? It was because 
Layla was like the person who like always like came, came up to me when I was feeling sad and she would always like just made me happy because sometimes I was scared to like wave at random strangers and like it was like she was an example and, like I should follow her because she loved everybody so much. What would she do when she saw people? She 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 would just <laughs> smile so big and she she would just say she would just say hi hi yeah. hi right <laughs> who did Layla love the most? Me. <laughs> me. Me, me. I'm glad we all think that it was us, right? That's good. It was me. There you go. So, what is the hardest thing? Actually, no. What is my? What is your favorite thing that you love about Layla? Like, what's the biggest thing you miss about her? About her smiles and like how, she, like when I was sleeping, she had her crib in my room, so she knew how to climb out of her her, her crib, last night. Um, and she was literally, so my bed is so high, so she couldn't get on it, so she would just start banging or kicking it somehow, so she would just wake me up or, like, slap me, like, slap try, try, try to, like, get up to me somehow, yeah. and then I, I would be so tired, and I'm like, go away, but then, um, then I thought it was one of my brothers, so, <laughs> because they wake me up a lot, so I... I so then when Everyone I saw just it was, you just want to be right in your room, right? Yeah. So when I saw it was Layla, like, she, she would just put out her hand and then I grabbed it. And then she would just lead me downstairs to, like, go swimming or get food for yeah. her. Yeah. And then, or she would just start crying to get mom. Yeah. So she loved her mommy the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with this, what, what's been the hardest thing for you with her death? What's been the hardest thing for you to kind of deal with mm -hmm. or to go through? Um... Just like, <laughs> just to like, I would, like miss her because she was so girly. She would, li would like literally get out the nail polish and like, she would like wear my like shoes mm -hmm. and start like marching around. And, she, and then she would always try to like put on lip gloss or like lipstick. Dick. I wonder who's the example she was following, her big sisters. <laughs> and um, she would always like like get the nail polish down and like mm -hmm. grab it and she would pick the most like, I would say like fancy or like pop color. Yeah. And then, she, then I just painted her nails. And, like I was all the girly things they did. Because you're pretty girly and so am I, right? We're all girly. So if you had another person, that, let's say another girl out there that lost her little sister, and she asked you, Rachel, what do I do once I lose my sister, or what can I do? What would you say to her to help her in this tough time? I would say just to like remember all the good memories you had with her because I like I had a lot and to like always still do it do the stuff just because you did those with her doesn't mean that you have to stop you could do them like like once I put um, makeup on my cousin for a dare and he, he wore the dress that I was wearing it was hilarious <laughs> so still to have <laughs> saying still have fun even though Leo's not here so yeah that's one thing that I feel like you're really good at you still turn on the music but you still dance even though Leo's not here right is that hard sometimes yeah yeah are you, is it is it is it still sad that she's gone? Yes. Yeah. Is it okay to be sad? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like okay. to cry whenever you want about her? Yeah. 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 Do we cry a lot? <laughs> yeah. We do cry a lot, and it's totally fine. I love you. Okay. Hey, anything else you want to say to anyone out there? Yeah. Help them. Okay. Yeah. You did so good. Thank you. Eric. Go get her, her brother. Yeah. Go, Go get, get your Derek. brother. Okay. Let's get the next smallest one. Okay, so I think that's the main thing is like each kid you're gonna see mourns differently and wants to talk about different things and I think it's really good to talk about it because when you don't talk about it, it's like you're pushing things down and you never get to the core the core of what they're feeling and I feel like when we have opened it up in our home we learn things that we have never even knew about Layla or things that happened that we never knew about Layla well and so as I talked to her about the death I remember her telling me she's like dad I didn't know what to do when you were doing CPR I just stood there I didn't know what to do and for kids, sometimes she may think that like there's something wrong, but as we all know that there's nothing they could do except for try to get help. And her thing is she felt like she didn't help at that time, which she did. She was there. 
And so I think as you'll see with each kid, that they all have a different experience. Um, one found them, one ran to different houses, one, one stayed, one called 911, one stayed at a neighbor's house. I mean, everybody did their part. But the important is, is that they realized that they did all they could to kind of help, you know? So here Stay is our youngest one. Can you Are you a little shy? All right, you can tell mommy's like, okay? Okay, <laughs> this is gonna be fun, do you know why? People just wanna know about Layla. Yeah, tell them about your favorite thing about Layla. What was your favorite thing about Layla? That she used to hug me. She used to give you the biggest hugs ever, didn't she? What was your favorite thing you did with Layla? Play with her. What, what did you, you play with her? I'm with my toys. Some people said Layla did not like food. Is that true? Did Layla not like food? She likes bananas mostly. She, mostly bananas. What else did she like? Um, did she like food or not like food? She didn't like food. She, she loved food. food. She loved food. <laughs> hey, what is one thing that you miss about Layla? Her not being here. Um, I'm sad about she, about she died though. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad, sad that she died too. She, honey. Does it sometimes make you sad? Yeah. Does it sometimes it make you cry? No. No. Just one time though. Just one time. Okay. If there's someone that just like you that lost their little sister and and they were five just like you, what would you tell to that person that lost a sister? What would you tell them to make them feel better? What would you say to them? What do you do to help you feel better? I don't know. No. Do you know. do you play with things to make her feel better? To play make you feel better? Her? You play with her. How do you play with her? Um, like play with full of toys. Okay, he does have this doll, and we sometimes pretend it's Layla because it's the Layla yeah. doll, and we take turns, don't we, sleeping with it at nighttime? Yeah. Do you want to so, go grab it and show? So, so Derek, what he did is he actually went to our neighbor's house and he stayed at our neighbor's house until the neighbor came, and he's the one that brought the doctor to the house, mm -hmm. and so he he rushed over to our neighbor's house, huh? What did you do to um, help? Find the doctor. What did tell everyone what you did to find the um, doctor? I knocked on the door and rang the doorbell. Then she came out like um like um like like a minute. Then I said this: My baby's drowning. Can you please save her? That's right. And then she ran over, and you helped so much yeah. to save what, her. What did, what did the doctor do to help save Layla? What did she do? CPR and like she did CPR yeah, and gave breast and gave breast to her. Yeah, nice. who was doing CPR before that she, um, she got there? The cop. The cop was, well, was after. Oh, you. Oh, His me. Daddy, daddy. Then heard yeah. the yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So. so, is there anything else you want to say about Layla? Um, I want to be done. Okay. okay. He's done. done. <laughs> say bye. This is his Layla bye doll. Bye. Say bye bye. bye All right. Go get Layla. Go get it. Go get Preston. Go get Preston. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And so the sister. first comment that he made when we got home is we were like, no, we're going to show this in a little bit. We were like, how are you feeling and everything? And he's like, it's okay, mom. You could just have another baby and we'll call her Layla. And so with these little ones, you're going to see a very big difference. And I didn't have to explain everything to him. Um, yeah, I explained just small amounts in time. And since Layla did pass away two days before Easter, we had talked about the resurrection, about Jesus Christ coming back, and he, he woke up. He totally thought she was going to be resurrected. He said, so mom, today Jesus got resurrected. So will Layla. Where's Layla at? Isn't she coming home today? And he would keep on asking me, when's Layla coming? Where's Layla at? You know, and that happened for about two weeks until he understood more fully that Layla's not coming back. She is living in heaven. You know, she's in the spirit world, and she is doing other work on the other side. And so... You know, whenever we talk about it, it's okay, Mom. He, she's in heaven. She's happy, you know. And it's really cool to see their testimony and just so their the, belief, too. So this <laughs> is middle. our next youngest son. Cool dude. Cool oh, dude. yeah. Right? Okay. So um, what was your favorite thing that you did with Layla? Um, how could, when I was born, I liked to play with Layla. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Because why? Why? Because I can't play with her. Why? Because her in the spirit. She's in the spirit, that's, that's right. right. Hey, buddy, what did you, what did you um, when she passed away, what was the hardest thing about her passing away? Oh, uh, the pain. The, the pain, pain that you felt where? In my life. 
in your leg. <laughs> my okay. Leg. Well, that's pretty deep. Okay, and you were the one that saved her. When you remember, you yeah. were the one that found her, like a hero right here. He's our hero. How did you, How did you find Layla? What happened? I just stepped in the pool. Did you uh, the hot tub kind of? Uh, yeah. kind of the hot tub. It's like a cold I call hot tub. it. Mm -hmm. I call it the pool. Mm -hmm. Oh, the hot tub. Okay. Was by my and then what happened? <laughs> then what happened? Then uh, I stepped in right. I go around, and um, you you know that pathway. Right. And then I turned. Right. I just go again. Uh, then I feel the screwy stuff. Then I go back around. No, no. At first, we were making cotton candy. Then I saw the door open. Then I closed it. And I actually need to go to the bathroom. Then I open it, closed it, and I come out, closed it. Then I ate like two cotton candies. Then I run in the hot tub and go around and touch something gooey and go back. There's something else foot that he felt, right? What else uh, the foot. Then I come up. I I thought it was a doll for a minute. I'm like, Lays, lays. Then James just jumping off the roof of like coming, and um, Mom thinks her, her like her inside. And then Dad going poo poo. Then he stepped. Then he stepped out. Then he. Uh, we I was upstairs going to the bathroom. That's yes, right. true. Okay. Then. Um, then we got Layla, then you, and you yelled for Layla, right? You said, yes. Mommy, Layla, and I came running. Yeah, then, yeah. then, um, Rachel tried to find Dad, then he actually did. Wait, so what, so, okay, so then we found him, did CPR, so let me ask you this question. No, so, uh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, so how, so how does that, how did that make you feel, though, when you found Layla in the water? How did that make sad. you feel? Sad, yeah. super sad. So, if I heard Dan gonna live. I know, I know. So if there's kids just like you out there watching. and they watching this and they lost a sister just like you, what would you the tell them? Right what would you tell them that could help um, them? Um to help them yeah. just um, um just go outside and just make a like a like sitting area, then you rest there, then try to think about your sisters, or like the olden days, oh, then, it used to be the yeah. Fair. So you mean go out and kind of make a special place for you to think about yeah. her? Where's your special spot at? That's that's what we did. We made a special garden for her. Where do you go at to go sit with her? Um, when I wake up, or sometimes I pet the chicks. Mm -hmm. I sometimes I pet the chicks. Then sometimes when I wake up, I just go. Right by Layla Garden and, and like sing a song, special song that I never sing to again. And he has a special song and it's called Angel Layla, right? No. What's it called? No. It's just called Layla. I can't okay, say. Layla. Okay. Anyways, it's our thing that we do at nighttime and he makes up a song. No, not at nighttime. Okay. When it like sunny out. Oh, okay. So, cool. Mike, our final question is uh, do, you, do you get sad a lot because of Layla's death? Kind of. Yeah. What makes you feel happier? What makes you feel happy? Like when you think about her, is there something that you can do yeah, that makes I you feel happy? Yeah, think about her. Sometimes you think about her and make you cry. Yeah, it does make you cry, huh? Sometimes I go outside. You see that dirt right there? Yeah, I see the dirt right there. Um, I sit right by the dirt. Sometimes it done raining. Then I just looked and the dirt was what is dirty. Then I just see me, not me, like Layla, oh. right by me. This little boy, too. Then you, like, think about. He's been gifted, too, with the ability to really have side, deep conversations with them. Um, and you see her. Ones no, that you we've don't never see met her. Even. Anyways, oh, sure. he has so much to say, and he's my little talker, and he's my little inventor. So he invents things, too, don't you? Mm -hmm. so, awesome. So final thing. Um, do you have any final message you want to say about Layla? Yeah. One message, um, you can really think about your, like, whoever died, like your grandfather, 
what is your like uh, great great grandma what died I don't know what his <laughs> age right now uh, so creepy still <laughs> so kind of creepy <laughs> He's creepy. awesome. Sometimes it's creepy when they die, and sometimes mm. he likes to tell Th us. Something. This little and guy is my mini me. <laughs> this is exactly how I was when I was. We love this guy so much, don't we? He's Thank so you so funny. much for sharing, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Last so, but not least. Last but not least, this is our oldest, and this is our oldest son. So, anyway, we'll have our oldest here. Come sit down. Boys, change your man. Okay, <laughs> James, what's happening? So, uh, do you have anything you'd like to say about Layla's death? Kind of like uh, how it's affected you and... Uh, Can we just skip to the questions? That was the question. That was the He's question. He's a little comical guy too. Okay. okay. So, how did, so uh, what's it, what was it like losing uh, your baby sister to a death? It was really sad. What was sad about it? Yeah, that was really deep. It was really deep. <laughs> um, what would, what was what, what what's been the hardest thing about uh, losing Layla these last few months? Waking up every single day and not knowing that she's there. Yeah, that's that really is. hard because it's almost like you see pictures of her and stuff. And do you like that we have so many pictures of her in our house? Why do you like that? So I can remember her. Some nights, some days, I cry when I see those pictures. But some nights and days, I feel like those pictures give me strength that I can still go on. Totally. Wow. Yeah, we have pictures throughout almost every single room of Layla. Um, James, so what's the biggest thing that you've kind of learned to cope through missing her so much and not having a sister here? What's how, how it's, what things do you do to help you? Well, things that I cope with. How, what, what do you do to cope with it? So you're not always What are things anyway. that help you to deal with the, you know, Layla's death? Well, That's what coping is. I like to plant stuff so it keeps my mind off things and I also really feel that if you serve people it takes your mind off you and it helps you focus more on other people this kid he is he incredible. is a server and that's the thing is like he is the boy that will just see something and be like we have to stop and we have to help somebody it just is in his heart and he's done it ever since he was really young. I, yeah when and this and this is this didn't happen just because of his death when we are Several years ago, we were living in a, another country, and I was on our way to pick up Shannon from um, from this meeting. And there's this trash all over these uh, rest home, old folks home. And um, James is like, "Dad, we need to pull over and pick up all that trash on their yard." And I'm like, "James, we are really late right now. We don't have time." And do you remember what you told me, James? No. You want to make this world Dad, a better Dad, place? He said, Dad, aren't we here to make this world a better place? And I'm like, Ugh. So I turned around and we started picking up trash. So he's been really good at service. So let me ask you this. How is that service, though, how does that help you with Layla, though? Is there something about service that's helped you overcome your pain or just kind of takes your mind just away from it? takes this? your mind off. And as you were saying when we did that, the number one thing you knew about was getting money for, for cans. We were getting money for cans? Yeah. yeah, we were collecting money for cans, yes. And I really loved it how the old folk there, he said, thank you for doing this for us, and he gave me two things of, like, of licorice. That's right, that's yeah, right. So sometimes when we even serve, we serve others. People serve us too, exactly. huh? Exactly. Have we got served here after Layla's death? Very much so. And so doesn't it make you want to serve more just because of Lila's yeah. death? Yes. So if there's someone out there, some some boy or girl that are your age, and they're dealing with a death, what would you tell them that could help them to overcome the, uh, you know, going through something that you just went through? Well, service is a really big thing, but like something that you want to do that just to get your mind off it sometimes. Like sometimes I like to draw, I like to read books, I like to plant. And that just gets my mind off of things. And but the big thing is really service, just going out and serving people. And this guy, he has some moves with dance moves and stuff, and that's one thing we used to always dance was we used to dance with Layla. For a while it was hard to turn up the music and start dancing, but once we started doing that, it was like Layla was there with us dancing with yeah. us, wasn't it? Well, as you can tell, I want to be like my kids when I grow up. Me too. My kids are, are good examples to me. I am so humbled by each one of them just because they each come with their own their own spirits and they teach me every day and 
their faith can sometimes be stronger than my own faith. So I'm just yeah. really proud of them and who they are. Come here, guys. Okay. Come say hi, bye to them. Everyone hey. say bye. That's our. Bye. Everyone say bye. bye. Wave. Say bye. Bye. Say bye. Bye. bye, guys. Thanks for joining. Oh okay. yes, and they want to share okay. this. So we, we'll share theirs. our story. Everyone grab yours. So just like we've been served, we had a lady Where's that mine? we we had no idea. We've never really met her before. Um, we met her actually here, on she, here. She was following our story. She found out about our, the loss of our daughter, and she decided to come and get um, some of Layla's clothing. And she, every one of us picked our favorite outfit of Layla's, and then she made a bunnies. Well, yes, yeah. bunnies. Got, um, this used to be Layla's favorite um, blanket for after she got out of the bath, so kind of a, a bath um, towel, towel oh. made of the ears. And then the clothes are our favorite. This is my favorite blanket Layla had, and my favorite bow. And each kid, show them yours. This is your their Pumps favorite thing. This is a BYU one. I really like I don't BYU. Have one. Don't grab it. Don't grab it. This is something that I wore when I was younger. And Kneel down, right, so they can see you. And Layla wore it too. And yeah. And, and mine said, "Where's um, yours, Mom?" And it had a hole next to the mom. Yeah. You, can you share this yours? This is mine. She was actually her first day that she came to this world. She had this bow on, and then I bought a matching outfit for her later on in life, and that was like one of my favorites. Yeah. And that's Preston's. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse and the cute little bow. So what, why we're talking about this is um, we're going to show you what type of impact we're talking about. Is in our life since this happened. This, uh, my wife had a message last month to collect as many clothes and blankets for individuals um, that have lost a child. And in honor of their family members who have passed away or anyone that's hurting. And we're going to show you all these individuals that have dropped stuff off this last month. So we had a goal to reach 150 worldwide. Um, our goal here in um, Florida was to reach 50. And that's meaning a blanket and an outfit together. And so we've had people donate either a blanket or an outfit or both. And it has been amazing, just the outpour of love. And so we're just gonna kind of show you. Remember, click on it so you can see it. I can't click on it. It's not. Can we see it? So here we go. This right here is the outpour of love and support from other people, either honoring Layla or somebody that they have lost. But as you, is it still working? Yeah. Okay. It's just been an outpour, and you'll see a bunch of different names, too, in honor of somebody else. Just darling, dressed in for the last time, and cuddled in for the last time, and lots of the parents, as a memory's sake, and the blanket as well as a memory's sake. So, he's trying to make it out of what? A wedding dress? Out of a wedding dress for a little infant baby. Yeah, so, okay, you might put that way. Okay, anyways, we just want to say thank you to everybody for your donation of love because that's truly what it is so thank you let's say thank you say thank you one more time thank you thanks you guys and to stay tuned i'm going to post the next video of what august what their what what our service project will be for august and we have elizabeth crackle who'll be posting her first video on. but august um the service project this month is to honor those who are first responders as we know the world's crazy right now and they're Defund, Defund the, police. the police. We need policemen, as we all know, who would show up when these devastations happen. Nurses, doctors, firemen, CPS, um, cops, ambulance. ambulance, so many more that come first. They see the tragedy, the first people to respond to the worst thing ever. And so we're going to honor them with gift baskets. Since we can't do food right now, we decided to do um, gift baskets. We'll explain it more. So hopefully you guys can be a part of it. Thank you again for all your donations. We love you guys so much. Bye. See you Thank later. Bye-bye.